clerk will lead us in the prayer of the pledge, please. solicitor 
which is section four duties. And the language in there says the town solicitor is the attorney for the town and legal advisor to the town council administrator and other members. But I think the next sentence is the real critical issue for the solicitor. He shall appear for and protect the rights of the town in all actions. And what are the rights of the town? They're spelled out in the charter. That's the Bible. That's the constitution of this town. He has to protect the town charter. That's what's important. So how do you defend how do you defend the rights of the town? You have to uphold that charter. And I'll give you an example. What happens when a developer's project is in trouble? He hires an attorney and they find loopholes. Yeah, the loopholes are legal, but are they ethical? And I, I guess that's the issue I have here. There might be some loopholes in this charter, the things that we didn't cover perfectly. They are loopholes. But I think we have to do the right thing. We have to be ethical about what's happening right now. I guess the other question comes up, when there's too much money on the table in the budget, you know, what, co what caused the problem? The problem started with the school committee, Mr. Jibble Body, coming to, the coming to the council looking for the extra $100,000. What bothered me with that proposal was not asking for the 100000 It was his next comment that says, if I don't need the money, maybe something can be worked out. What kind of response is that? That we're in the process of a budget, and the answer is maybe something can be worked out for that hundred thousand dollars. It made no sense at all. So I look at the hundred thousand dollars. What's happening on the school committee? If you read the paper and you read the minutes, there's a lot of money being spent on bonuses, larger stipends, and other unnecessary expenditures. The school committee probably already spent that hundred thousand dollars already. It's pretty spent. I guess you can control the details of the municipal side. It's very difficult for the school committee, but you, tonight you can control the municipal. I guess the, my comment is don't put more money on the table so that we can find ways to spend it. We set the budget on June 29th. The budget was set. Let's live with it. You need to protect the taxpayers. The taxpayers put all this time into the charter, and they're the ones that are paying the bill. The question is, why do we have a charter review committee? If we don't follow the charter, why are we spending all this time trying to revise the charter? It makes no sense at all. If we don't care about the charter, then forget about the charter review. Just push it aside and say, this charter is fine. Whatever language is in there, leave it alone. We're just going to do what we want. Is that what we really, the town really wants to do? I think we want to work together to revise the charter and make it better. So what do we have to do? I guess I'm asking the council that we make the July 17th meeting, vote on it, that we recommend that that meeting is null and void, and go back to the net tax levy that was approved based upon the expenditures from June 29th. So just throw out the June, July 17th meeting, go back to what you did on, July, on June 29th. And the only winner of this whole process is going to be the taxpayer. Mike Clifford's not going to win. I'm not going to win. You're not going to win. It's the taxpayer. That's what we're here for, is for the taxpayer. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Nagel,
the increase to the budget of $100,000 for smart improvement. And let me be very clear. We didn't spend two cents of that. Okay? That's in, I assume, in your contingency account. You never asked for it, and it's sitting there. We didn't misspend it. I mean, I, I, I don't understand why there's so much negativity towards this. This is a good thing. And let me say this, as it's been stated, we were the only district who did this. And I'm proud of that. I'm very proud of that. It's called working together for the betterment of our town. As previously stated in the prior week, the town administrator, council president, and I met to discuss the situation. So what did the $100,000 do for our district? Because again, we didn't spend it. It allowed the school district to move forward and continue to improve, improve our school system. We were able to hire, get up, get teachers in place, and continue with all our programs. And I'd like to go to a July 10th Providence Journal article. And if I can quote some things out of here, Rhode Island school districts taking a brutal hit in state budget standoff. The budget officer made it clear there is no guarantee that our local communities and school districts will be reimbursed. And this is what we were facing at the time. So the next quote is from Jeremy Chapada. This is brutal for us. It's brutal for every kid in, in the state of Rhode Island. I am confident we can figure a way to provide quality programs, but it's going to be really hard. The decisions all of us are having to make are going to be tough, and they will hurt kids. That didn't happen in our district, because you know what? We're out in front of it. Next quote from Kim Duffy, the Executive Director of Rhode Island Association of School Committees. School districts are not allowed to run deficits. Districts will have to go back to local governments and ask for additional funding, which may mean supplemental tax bills. Now, I know we're in a good position. Other communities may have had to look at that. Hopefully that was not something that we needed to do. So I, I know one of the things on the agenda is to refund the money. I don't agree with that. I know that's not a popular decision, but it makes no sense to me. And let me tell you why. It's going to cost $4,000 to refund the money. And we need trucks, cars, equipment, capital repairs. If we refund it, we're only going to have to raise it next year. If you don't think the budget's going to go up $100,000, I mean, I'm sure it is. I'm sure we're not going to get the tax relief. So at some point, we may not have to borrow the $100,000. We will save money in the future by bonding $100,000 less. And I don't think anybody can't think of a very positive, not wasteful way to spend $100,000. I just, I don't understand what the big upset is about this. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to come up before the council? Some folks would like to see the general fund increase. 
I don't happen to believe that the general fund does need to increase in order to improve the town's ability to borrow. I think it is a good thing if we could pay that down and pay it down as quickly as possible, but you've got to do it the right way. And I just am very concerned about setting that precedent. So thank you. Thank you.